Hello everyone, welcome back to csecmathtutor.com. Today we're going to be talking about completing the square. Before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the quadratic function. This question has the quadratic function x squared minus 6x plus 5. And what we want to know are these three things. What is the axis of symmetry? What is the minimum value reached by the function? And what are the coordinates of the turning point or the vertex? And we can look at our graph and by inspecting it, answer these three questions. So the axis of symmetry is that line that splits the graph exactly into two halves, making the two halves symmetric. And if we observe our graph, we can see that this line is the axis of symmetry. Splits the graph exactly into two. So the, axis of, the equation of the axis of symmetry would be x is equal to three. So we have our answer here, x equals 3. Now, the next question, what is the minimum value reached by the function? Again, by inspection, we can see the graph comes all the way down, and this here is the minimum value. We can go across to the y-axis and read off our number. Our number there is negative 4. So our minimum value is negative 4. And the next thing is to write down the coordinates of our turning point or vertex. This point here is our turning point. It is the point at which the graph goes no lower and returns or goes no higher and, and returns. So in this case, we're dealing with a minimum turning point. So our, our vertex is right here. And the coordinates of the vertex are 3 and negative 4. And we remember to write that in a bracket because we're dealing with coordinates. So the turning point is made up of the axis, the value of the axis and the value of the turning of, of the minimum. Um, let's go on to another question and look at one. In this case, we have a graph that goes up, comes back down. So this one has a maximum. We could have seen something else around here. Let me mention it from now. In this question, the Coefficient of the x squared is a 1. It's a positive number. For that num for that reason, the graph will have a minimum. Here, the coefficient of the x squared is a negative number. It's a negative 2. So this graph will have a maximum. All right. So what is the equation of the axis of symmetry? We can see that again by looking at the graph. We can see that this line passing through the middle of the graph is the axis. It splits the graph exactly into halves. So our equation will be written as x is equal to negative 2, x equal negative 2, and the maximum value reached by the function is 10. You can see it from here, it goes no higher than that. So reading it from the y-axis, y is equal to 10. And the coordinates of the turning point again, we simply combine these two numbers. So we have negative 2 and positive 10, write it in a bracket. These are the coordinates of the turning point. Now the question is, what if we had a quadratic function and we didn't have the graph? How could we find those three values? How could we find the equation of the axis of symmetry? How could we find the maximum or minimum reached? And how could we write on the coordinates of the turning point without drawing the graph? Completing the square gives us this ability to analyze a quadratic function without drawing the quadratic function. So in order to answer our questions, we need to write this function in the general form ax squared plus bx plus c in this form. Once we write it in this form, we are able to use the values h and k to predict or to tell what the axis will be and what the minimum will be and therefore what the turning point will be. Now here are some notes for us to consider. You will probably need to memorize these because CXE does not include these on the paper. These values were found by completing the square on this general function. So the h is the b value over 2 times a, that b value over 2 times a, and the k value here is that c value minus this b square over 4 times the a value. Now some notes again. The negative 
or opposite of the age value is the axis of symmetry. So having here this age value, when, we, when it's calculated, the axis is not that value. We have to take the negative of that value to get our axis. The k is what it is. It is either the minimum or the maximum. And once we have our axis and our k value, we can write down our turning point as axis and minimum or maximum. Now let's go back to our question and use these values to see how we could calculate it without looking at the graph. Let's start here. So in this question, our a is 1, 1x one squared. Our b is negative 6 from there. And our c is 5. So if we were supposed to write this function in the form a bracket x plus h square plus k, then we could simply use the, the formula to find what the h and our k are. And let's do that. So h is b over 2a, which is our b value is negative 6 over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1, which gives us negative 6 over 2, which gives us negative 3. So h is negative 3, which tells us that our axis is the opposite of this value. So the axis is equal to the negative of negative 3, which is positive 3. So x is equal to 3, and you can see that from here, that's what it, it corresponds with what is on the graph. The k value now is c, which is 5, minus b squared, and b is negative 6, so negative 6 squared over 4 times a, which is 4 times 1. This gives us 5 plus 5 minus rather 36 over 4. 36 over 4 gives us 9. So we end up with 5 times 9 and 5 minus 9 is negative 4. So you can see here that our k value being negative 4 turns out to be the minimum value that the graph reaches. In this question, applying the same formula, h is equal to b over 2a and k is equal to c minus b squared over 4a with our a being negative 2 from here. This is the coefficient of a square term. It is negative 2. It is our a. b is equal to negative 8 and c is equal to 2. Dropping these values into this formula gives us h is equal to b, which is negative 8, over 2 times negative 2, over a is negative 2. This gives us negative 8 over negative 4. A negative divided by a negative here gives us a positive 2. So h is equal to positive 2, and our axis is the opposite of this. So axis. The opposite of 2 is negative 2. And again, you can see that that corresponds with what we have here on our graph. The k value is c, which is 2 minus b square, which is negative 8 square over 4 times a, which is negative 2. So we end up with 2 minus. 64 over negative 8, which gives us 2 minus negative 8, which is 10. Again, we can see that our k value being 10 is the same as the value up at the top of the graph, which is the maximum. So we can find these values without drawing the graphs, and this is very useful when it comes on to analyzing the axis, the minimum or maximum, and the vertex of a quadratic function. Very useful for finding them without drawing the graph. However, CXE does present questions in part B, part two of the paper that does ask the students to 
apply the completing of the square um, as an entity in itself. So let's look at the question here that um, we have. 5x squared plus 2x minus 7. We're supposed to write it in this form. Um, a, B, C, are real numbers. I chose this question because previously in the exam report, when students did this question, a number of students wrote this um, inaccurately. Um, the general form of the quadratic expression is AX squared plus BX plus C. And for some reason, CXC doing this caused some confusion in the students. So what some students did was say, okay, A, so five, um, X plus B, what is B? B is two, and C is negative seven. Of course, this was not correct. Um, but it led to some confusion because of the letters that were used. And I'm pointing it out now so that as a student looking at a question like this, if these letters are used, then you will understand that this is not what you're supposed to do. So normally it's written as x bracket x plus h square plus k. But because the a, b, and c are part of the general equation, it caused some confusion. So let us try to find out first to write this function in this form. So over a is 5, over b is 2, and over c is negative 7. And we're going to drop it in the formula that says h is equal to b over 2a, which means that h is equal to 2 over 2 times 5, which means 2 over 10, which is the same thing as 1 over 5. You didn't have to simplify it, but I'm simplifying it here. And your k value, in this case the c value, well the k, is equal to c, which is negative 7, minus b square which is 2 square over 4 times a which is 4 times 5 so we have negative 7 minus 4 over 20 which is negative 7 minus 2 or 1 over 5 which is negative 7 and 1 over 5. so the first thing we are supposed to do at part a is to write it in that form so we take our a our a is still 5, and we write back our x, and we have a 1 over 5 for our h value, put the square in, and our k value is negative 7 and 1 over 5, which is quite different from what the misconception would have been in the top part of the question that I pointed out. So, this is part A answered. Having answered part A, the question says, hence or otherwise, determine the minimum value of the function. Now, since k is the minimum, the minimum is therefore this number, negative 7 and 1 over 5. That's our minimum. The value at which that minimum occurs is the same thing as the axis. So part 2 b part 1, b part 2 is asking for the axis. The minimum or maximum happens at the axis, wherever the axis is. So the, in this question, the value of x at which the minimum occurs is x equal to the opposite of what this number is. So this number is 1 over 5, we take the opposite, which is negative 1. Or just take this part of the question and solve it. x plus 1 over 5 equals 0. In which case, x is equal to negative 1 fifth. So this is our axis. It is the point at which the maximum or minimum occurs. This is our minimum. It is our k value. And we have written the function. 5x squared plus 2x minus 7 in that form. Now let's look at another question. Um, express the quadratic function 1 minus 6x minus x squared in that form. Here they're using different letters. Now they're using the k and the h. So we know that our h is equal to b over 2a. Our k value is equal to c minus b squared 
over 4a. So we're going to have b, well, or a here. This is our c. This is our b. So write them out. c is equal to 1. b is equal to negative 6. And our a is equal to negative 1. This is the coefficient of the square term right there. So it's b, which is negative 6 over 2 times a, which is 2 times negative 1, which gives us negative 6 over negative 2, which is positive 3. Now let's find our k. It's c, which is 1, minus b squared, which is negative 6 squared over 4 times a. a is negative 1. So we have 1 minus 36 over negative 4, which gives us 1 minus negative 9, which gives us 10. Having gotten our 10, we can write the function in that form and complete part 1. So part 1, our k is needed first. So our k is 10 minus a. A is negative 1. We open our bracket, write our x, our h is 3, plus 3, and we put our square, and we are finished with part 1. Part 2 says, hence state the maximum value of the function. We know that the function has a maximum because the a value is negative. So the maximum value of the function is the k value, which is 10. So the maximum is 10. And the second part, b, the equation of the axis of symmetry of the quadratic function is the opposite of our h value. So our h value was 3. So we're going to take the opposite of our h value. And x, therefore, is going to be equal to the opposite of 3, which is negative 3. This is our axis of symmetry. Thanks for watching. I hope you would have gained some experience from watching the video. And I hope that you are now able to complete the square and understand how to link it to a quadratic function.